What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's one o'clock in the afternoon, and it's election day. Um, I'm not really surprised to say that most people are out and about doing their electoral things or complaining about each electoral candidate. Um, because I'm doing an election day show does not mean I'm going to comment one way or the other in terms of what I'm doing and where I'm going, um, except to say, everybody, just try to remain calm, be nice, and do the right thing, whatever that means for you. Just wanted to remind everybody before we start today, of course, would be our rescheduled show with Mike Eaton, who represents Hero Clean. Thank you so much, Dana Humphrey for our lovely introduction and of course without her I would not have him on the show today so I'm very excited to be talking about his product and my apologies once again to him for having to reschedule the show. Quick reminder to everybody Wednesday November 9th Kelly Cravatis is coming on 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. He is an actor executive producer, he's a karaoke singer, he's also a violin player as well as a painter. Oh my gosh so much talent all in one room and he's from New York City which makes him even more awesome. Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time, another New York City actor and comedian himself, Thomas, I want to say Ochi, and I'm apologizing right now, Thomas, because I might be saying that wrong. It's O-C-C-H-I. He's going to be on the show on Thursday the 10th at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time. And then, of course, on Friday, November 11th at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, we have Jenna Barron's of Barron Psychological Services. We're going to talk about the various means and ways in which case we can get help for our adolescents as well as children. She also has branched out into the adult side of things, but I think primarily she's of the adolescent nature. So definitely want to talk to her. 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Friday. But without further ado, Mike has been gracious enough to call in. We want to leave him holding, so let's get him on the line and start the show. Mike Eaton. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Well, you know, it's election day, and I have two kids home from school, and one is sick, and I'm doing a show. <laughs> so we're yeah, pretty busy in a banged up car. Today. <laughs> yes, in a banged up car and, you know, um, calendar shoot and 80,000 other things. And I'm so nervous because my guest today makes me nervous. There's a lot of reasons for me to be afraid of you. So I hope you'll be gentle with me today. <laughs> I'll be gentle. I've heard very good things about you. Yes, well, anybody that's Dana Humphrey's client, I, I have to say I'm very, very blessed. She brings me some of the best people anywhere, everywhere. So I'm very, very excited. And I've done yeah, my homework great. and I know a lot about you. Yes, she's oh, absolutely good. amazing. Oh, good. That's creepy, though. Um, well... <laughs> A journalist's job is to make sure that she's 800% on top of things, so to speak. So exactly. I want to give a um, – it's, it's my responsibility to let my audience know that the celebrity that's on my show – and, yes, I call everybody a celebrity on my show. You either entertain, wow, motivate, honored. educate, et Excellent. cetera. So you are – you're a celebrity. And um, I want to talk about a bunch of different things. But the first thing I want to talk about is a quote that you made. And I believe it was your quote. And it's so cute. He says, women find men who do homework homework. I'm okay, and this is without wine. Housework, sexy. I think that is so cool. Is that your quote, or did you pick that up from somewhere? Yeah, we picked that up from a uh, from an article. Um, I actually can't oh, even cool. remember the source, but there's a bunch of research oh, out there that that shows that. But you know, it's very interesting that uh, there was a uh, there was an advertisement over in uh, the UK last year for Levi's, and it was mm-hmm. for a specific kind of jean. And the television spot was literally a guy walking in in his boxer shorts, pulling his jeans out of the dryer and putting them on. And it, it's, it like broke the system over in the UK. And, you know, the blogs were like, oh, my God, the guy's so hot. And, you know, and sure. it's, it was very interesting. And somebody pointed it out to me. And, the, you know, all the jeans sold out immediately. They had to pull sure. the ad because they didn't have any more jeans left in. And it's kind of started getting me thinking. I'm like, wow, there's a – there's a different side to this. Um, and I've also sure. had the experience that, you know, going into the office one day, you know, I was sitting there in like just suit pants without a shirt on ironing. And my girlfriend walked in and she was just kind of sitting there staring at me. And I was like, all right, <laughs> there is something to this <laughs> that guys need to pick up on. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt, actually. And I, and I, as a female, would be the first one to say that, as we all know, as females. Um, and, it's, and, and we'll get into that philosophy for the whole reason why you started Hero Clean to begin with. 
And I find it an interesting dynamic that obviously the roles are starting to change. It used to be, oh, we're the domestic ones because we're the females and blah, 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 and all that good stuff. But it is very sexy. It, I mean, I don't think men realize how much credit you get or how far you get when you offer to, like, do dishes and laundry yep. and clean the bathroom. I'm like, oh, my God, I'd be in love with a person who did that. Not that it's happened right. to me. We keep hoping. But let's get real, okay? Men are men. So half of you get it, <laughs> half of you don't get it. I, I totally understand that. But that's now, a, that, as that is an improvement over 20 years ago for sure. Oh, with, without a doubt. I mean, I, and I the don't want to diss anybody. I have – Oh, no, I agree with you. And I see that. I mean, I see a lot more working dads that used to be working dads that are home now that are more than Mr. Mom type. And I give credit to anybody who does that because I know full well what a job it is on both sides of the spectrum. What I found interesting was the comment that you made, the whole, and I want you to talk about your initiating force, of course, because you believe, of course, from a marketing and a branding standpoint, even packaging, things are catered more so to women. So I want you to talk a little bit to our audience about what you noticed and what got you to a point where you're like, you know what, let's do something more macho geared, so to speak, or get something out there that the men will appreciate. So this all kind of started about four years ago. I was in a grocery store kind of going through my typical ritual of opening all the laundry bottles, smelling Hmm. the product inside and buying the least offensive smelling one I could find. And I just had a moment where I was like, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. I don't use women's sure. deodorant. I don't use women's shampoo. All, that whole category, it is very segmented male and female, and that's new within sure. the past 20 years. Why am I, as a single guy, being forced to wash my clothes and clean my home with products that are essentially formulated, fragranced, branded, and marketed almost exclusively to women? And you look at the bottles, mm-hmm. you look at the fragrances, the bottles have a nice, like, feminine, rounded silhouette. The colors on the bottles are typically skew a little bit more female. Most of the fragrances are floral-based or kind of very sweet. They're not really geared at all to guys, which, you won't, you know, clearly I, you, you understand why. But, sure. I, you know, that, that, at that moment in time, I was like, all right, well, there's probably a number of other guys out there like me. And so I started doing a little bit of research about kind of what was going on with guys in the country. And the U.S. Census numbers had just come out, and there were some staggering numbers that that came out of that study. One, 47% of the adult male population in this country is single. And that's growing at a double-digit clip every 10 years. And that is that's crazy. Guys are getting married later. The average age of a first marriage is almost 30 years old for guys. They're divorced mm-hmm. more often, almost 50% of first marriages, 62% of second marriages. And then something that you had touched on earlier, you know, 43% of all chores and married households are now being done by guys. 43, mm-hmm. 40, I think 43 or 42%-ish of all grocery is now being purchased by guys. And so I think the general kind of commentary about all this was that I was like, wow, this, there's a massive shift going on in this country with, you know, guys involvement, singles, and, you know, guys really having to take control and own their own cleaning process. And that's kind of when I thought, you know what, I want this. You know, I had just kind of realized my behavioral patterns that I was just dealing with something that wasn't a fit for my tastes and habits Nobody seemed willing to make it, and so I decided to make it myself. And I like that. I've always liked overachievers and initiators because I'm a huge initiator of everything I do, too, and that's awesome. Um, One of the components that I want to mention, and this is very important, and maybe it's just me, but I think this is huge nowadays, that your products are 90% natural-based. Now, because I'm not a scientist, um, and I'm not going to lie, I like donuts and Mountain Dew, so I'm not the most natural person in the world, although I should be. Um, right. Tell me why it was important to you to use natural ingredients, and more so, what types of natural ingredients are you using to formulate all these different products so that people have an understanding of what it's based on? Yeah, so those so those stats were – so there's kind of two sides to our business. One, our original oh. product line. Yeah, so our original product line, which was the bottles that were kind of the silver bottles with the green labels, we're actually phasing mm-hmm. those products out, and those were the natural oh. products. Right, and so the reason we're doing that mainly is due to cost. We cannot afford oh. to build those, brand, those products at a high level of performance that those products were at a cost basis mm-hmm. that is even remotely within the realm of reason. And that's, that gets into more of an ingredient supply issue. The product that we had used okay. in there, there's, there's a surfactant out there called Plantapon. It's a really unbelievable mm-hmm. product. 
we can't get our hands on it for a price that makes a lot of sense for us now. And so we've actually pivoted okay. to a less natural product, but a much more performance-based product um, that is really, really targeted to those heavy-duty uh, cleaning needs of guys. Ah, okay. I got you. Yeah, because I thought to myself, I saw that, and I'm like, you know, nowadays everybody is going eco-friendly, obviously, along with gluten, soy, all that other good stuff. So right. So it's refreshing to see that, but you do have to think about that cost factor. I guess I wasn't, uh, Right. You know, now, the one caveat is that there's there's a program that the U.S. government has called Safer Choice, um, and it's basically their kind of hedge between all-natural and kind of really heavy-duty, you know, cleaning agents uh, products that are out there. And the Safer mm-hmm. Choice kind of stamp of approval is um, is going to be something that's going to be a little bit more of the norm moving forward. Walmart's moving towards pushing their suppliers to be in that program. We actually have a, another round of our products that will probably be out latter part of 2017 that are going to be Safer Choice compliant. They're not all natural, mm-hmm. but they're very much kind of better for the environment, better for your skin. There's a bunch of ingredients that are not going to, you know, that, that aren't allowed in it. And so it's, it's, a, it's a great progression of kind of that hedge between products that are really actually very good cleaning products, but are better for the environment, better for you as a person, uh, et cetera. One of the issues also that, you know, that those all natural products run into is that they don't really work very well. And um, hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that less than 5% of all cleaning products are actually those natural based products. Um, so, well, um, yeah, that was going to be an interesting question I had was, and I don't know if you have the answer to this, but I've wanted to ask it because I've interviewed other people that used certain cleaning and cleansing products and such. So my question is, do you know, and you may not know if a natural based ingredient type pro product, if you will, is it better for you in terms of obviously when we're all cleaning, you know, we all clean sinks and toilets and things like that. Yep. Is it better for you, meaning safer for you in terms of your skin's not going to break out as much? Do you know what I'm saying? Cause we all, even if you wear gloves, there's always hazards, that kind of stuff. Do you know right. if it's better to be using a natural based sort of thing? Does that help that at all? Do you know? I think, you know, I think the natural based products are, are great for people who have, um, uh, sensitivities uh, to specific chemicals, like people who have a lot of allergies. Um, mm-hmm. I think that a lot of the chemicals that are in base cleaning products are pretty benign. Um, they're not okay. t- toxic, harsh, and all of that. There are a few that you know we don't use that are out there that you know the you know, there's certain big products out there that still have formaldehyde in it, which doesn't make any sense. And oh my god, um, that's wild. yeah, it's yeah, it's very interesting, but. Um, you know, the, the, natu- the more natural products are, you know, they're sugar-based or cocoa-based surfactants. They're certainly, they're certainly better for you, better for people who have allergies. I still wouldn't drink them. <laughs> they're not. Oh, well, they're yeah. still not. You're, you're not going to – this isn't like just flavored water. Um, so, right. you know, even though, even though they are natural-based, they're, they're still cleaning agents in it, and they're not uh, – um, you know, they're not something you want to take a bath in or drink or anything like that. Right. But, uh, you know, certainly the technology as it relates to those natural base cleaning products, the bio products is kind of what we call them, is still evolving. It's, uh, you know, as I mentioned, it's such a small percentage of the total cleaning products market. The resources being put towards those ingredient bases are now just starting to grow. And so our goal, hopefully down the road, is to have a fully natural product line that is kind of, um, performance neutral to the really kind of high-end cleaning product lines out there that everybody uses that are bleach-based and really really chemically, so to speak. Sure. I understand. Now, because, once again, I'm what you call product ignorant, and not that I'm ignorant, but obviously, of course, I think it's important to talk to the listening audience about this. So let's say Mike has his initial idea, and he says, okay, I want to go off and I want to do something like this. Because, of course, there are chemicals and other things involved. Talk to me a little bit about the process of how you get approval to just stamp on a label and say, hey, here's Hero Clean. We're going to go out and sell this. You know, because everybody has a dream, but sometimes, you know, if somebody's out there thinking, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Talk to us a little bit about the some of the, the better parts of this process and some of the more challenging parts to getting to where you are now and actually selling a product like this. Because I right. think there's testing so, and approvals and all that stuff. Absolutely. So, you know, Clearly, I mean, the people who really know me will understand this statement in that if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> I'm telling you okay. right now, it's this is not for the faint of heart. I I sure. had this idea. I started going down the path, and it is it is a very very challenging thing to get into. And um, you know, starting from the very beginning, kind of like, all right, so I've got this idea. I kind of had an idea of like what products I wanted to create. The the, the profiles, like who makes that. I'm not a formulator. I don't have my own chemistry lab. So you got to you got to find people right. who will help you make that. I was lucky enough to have a couple friends that have a uh, sun care line, um, and they introduced me to their fragrance house, and that's kind of where I started. And I met the fragrance guys, and they helped me create a fragrance profile um, that I liked and that fit kind you know, of the brand that I wanted to create. But then I had to find people who helped me kind of come up with the chemistry. Um, there are, there's an infrastructure, you know, kind of a manufacturing infrastructure in this country, in this country there it's, it's, it's called, they're called co-packers. Um, these are basic mm-hmm. blending and filling operations that do, that make a lot of the products that you see on shelf on a third party basis. So a lot of these major brands that you see, whether it's a method or a SC Johnson, a lot of them do not own their own manufacturing infrastructure 100%. So, um, okay. And so they rely on the manufacturing capabilities of these co-packers to create some of their products um, and get them out to market. So I had to find manufacturers that would help um, me you know, create my product line from a manufacturing standpoint and then also that had in-house chemistry groups that would actually help me formulate. And so there was a combination of the co-packers, chemistry folks, some chemists that I'd met outside of them, um, that got me to where I was with the formulations. And then once you get the formulations, you got to find these co-packers that will actually work with you. And that's really the key thing that was oh so Lord. difficult about this whole process because here I am, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a huge name in the consumer products world. And so I pick up the phone, mm-hmm. I call these co-packers. They don't know who I am. They don't know if I'm a fraud. They don't know anything about me. They right. also know I don't have any customers. And so there's no volume there. And so I couldn't get anybody to work with me. You know, they were just like, great, I like your idea, but call us when you have some customers. And so it took, you know, the better part of a year to finally find some really small co-packers that would actually work with me and help me through this process. And, you know, through them, that's where I created that first product line. And, you know, throughout that process, you're working with very small, you know, kind of not the most sophisticated groups of manufacturers and formulators and all of that. And the the whole process was just riddled with issues, you know, where, you know, there are oversights and, you know, labels were manufactured incorrectly. And it was just, it was just one issue after the other, but you just kind oh, of I push bet. through them. Every, every issue that comes up, you learn a lesson. Um, and so, you know, getting through that whole process, I got my first kind of 10,000 units of each product, which is another okay. side of this is that, you know, most of these co-packers won't even give you the time of day unless you guarantee a number of units. And so oh, I when I made my first round of products, I had to guarantee that I would buy 10,000 units of each. And so that's a financial commitment. You know, I had no credit with these guys, so I had to prepay for all of it. Um, oh, Lord. And that, you know, so it took a lot of cash and a lot of time and a, a lot of heartache, et cetera. But I finally got my, you know, my, my initial line and 10,000 units of each of them. But then you got to figure out, okay, now that the manufacturers created these, how, where are you going to put them? And so you have to find a whole, like a, a warehouse company. They call them a 3PL company. Um, okay. And uh, where you then ship all these products there. And then those are the places that actually fulfill the orders, whether they're online orders or retailer orders, et cetera. <clears throat> and uh, once they're in the warehouse, then it's, then you got to go find your customers. So it, right. you know, that whole process probably took me a f- year and a half or so at least for my initial product run and uh, a lot of money and a lot of time. And, uh, you know, then I got to the point where I had my product and then I had to go out and find some customers. Oh my goodness. And then the real fun started. (laughs) Well, no kidding. I imagine. Well, not only as you're saying it's a lengthy process, but I want to go back to a couple of things you said. First of all, you had mentioned, um, and just so that folks know this, you're using more of a high end cologne scent. And so did you just take a combination of, okay, I like this one and this one and this one, or, um, 
how does that happen? You know, because like I like white diamonds, but I like Vera Wang. You know what I'm saying? How do you get right. to that? Right. So the fragrance house basically said, listen, let's set up a meeting. We'll run through, you know, look at your brand, ah. um, which, by the way, I created myself. I was like, you created the logo and the colors and actually right. did it during Hurricane Sandy up in New York. We were sitting at my kitchen table under a, a candlelight. Oh, my God. <laughs> coming up with different logos. Wow. But Anyway, we, um, uh, you know, I sat down and started thinking through what what are the fragrances that I actually like, and so I was going around my apartment right. and, you know, pulling samples of whatever shampoo or deodorant or candles or anything, and invariably found myself right. in my bar, and uh, you know, you start li- uh, um, smelling cognacs and bourbons and gins and all that stuff. They do smell pretty good, and so I brought samples of it for all of all those, and we sat down with the fragrance house. And they're like, well, what do you got? And so I started, you know, kind of putting stuff across the table in these little containers. And one of them was, um, was gin. And uh, really? uh, they said, yeah. And so they were like, well, we, we figured you may bring this. And they literally it was like, I pushed it across the table. And then they pushed something across the table. And it, it was my fragrance. Like they had already figured it oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, they, um, uh, so they had, they had done some, uh, they had done some work with. Uh, um, they had done some work prior to the meeting, and they had brought me three or four different fragrances, and they were all based on liquors, um, because they thought that would be really good for a guy's brand. <laughs> That's kind of how we ended up with our fragrance. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now that is cute, actually. Now I know there was a reference to um, uh, Bedrock of Juniper. And I found that interesting right. because I, I was digging around and looking, and I'm like, okay, how does that all get integrated in this? That's kind of interesting, actually. So I want to touch base yeah, on that. Yeah, so the, the um, juniper side of it was gin. So it is one of the flavor components of gin. That's um, odd. Yeah, yeah. Neat. And, and that's neat. That actually is kind of neat because it's a, not only is it a great marketing point, but it's one of interest because most people that are going to read that, they're going to be like, what? Where the hell did they get that from? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, that's different. That's out of the ordinary and you want something like that. Right, clearly. right. Speaking of different, I want to highlight this and this is extremely important. One of the things that Mike does, of course, is takes a portion of the proceeds and he's partnered up with the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Huge on this. I'm very, very big on companies that do that. So I want to ask um, – you to elaborate a little bit about this. Tell me how you partner with them, why it's important that you're partnering, and why it's important that we as citizens outside of your company, et cetera, if we can, help their organization. So um, the IAVA partnership is, is very important to this company, and it's part of the fabric of the company. And so when we were putting together the, you know, the, the, the platform and you know, what the product was going to be, I wanted to – have a company that also had a mission to it outside of trying to make money and helping guys sure. clean and all of that. Um, a friend of a friend uh, introduced me to Paul Rykoff, who's the head of the IAVA, and he was just starting this charity about the time that I was starting Hero Clean. And they have a very okay. similar view of their world as we do to our world. It's very They want to be disruptive. They want to do things differently. Um, they're a very aggressive organization focused mainly on PTSD issues as well as a number of other issues. Paul was very intrinsic in getting the PTSD legislation pushed through the Senate last year. Um, he's one nice. of those guys, former Marine, former Wall Street guy, impressive figure. He is sitting in senators' offices you know, making sure these guys support the causes that um, they support. And we met mm-hmm. and hit it off. And so, um, you know, we have we have an agreement and an arrangement between our organizations that we kind of scratch each other's backs a lot. And so, um, you know, they introduce us to their other clients, potential um, uh, retailers we could work with. Um, we obviously right. bring money to them. We also bring them to our retailer meetings because, you know, say, for example, in Target, we are meeting with the military business committee and it's a senior executive group that helps put, uh, put together the target military, um, policies, you know, within target and for their guests. And Paul and I are going to go out and sit down with them and work through, you know, how they can be a better company and help vets more. And they could, you know, put programs together that could help their vet, you know, their, their guests support veterans causes. And so, 
basically what I wanted to do is, is, is come together with an organization that is willing to work with us a little differently where it's not all about money. It's all, you know, cause mm-hmm. we're a small company. We're not writing checks like Coca-Cola is writing or P and G is writing. Of course. But if I can bring value to them by introducing them to people that are, you know, titans of their respective industries that could help their organization outside of hero clean, that's a lot of the stuff that we're doing together. And so it's been a great partnership to date. Um, and um, we're actually heading up to their annual gala up in New York this later this week, um, which is one of their big celebrations of the vets, et cetera. But, uh, you know, certainly we want to be one of those companies that isn't just writing a check, that we're helping vets any way we can um, to the point gotcha. where, you know, we're obviously about to start staffing up. We're probably going to have street teams out there handing out hero clean samples. Mm. We're trying to staff those with all vets. And so, um, we really want this cause to be part of the fabric of this company. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue on with it because it's, it's really been a great partnership. Um, and, uh, you know, I see this thing going on for years if possible. So, that was really cool. And how ironic and interesting, because I might very well be in New York at the end of the week. I don't know yet. We'll see. I always say that. Every oh, time really? He'll let us know. Say, I'm like, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly there all the time. I mean, it's my, it is literally my second home, and I'm going to live there eventually. Um, I've, I've, obviously, I have kids at home, so, I mean, I have to wait probably seven more years, I think it is. Right. Yeah, because most of what I do, I mean, radio is just one component. I do film. I do all sorts of other things. So, and actually, Oh, interesting. Listen to me. We're just talking about this right now. I know. I we're going to have a little side conversation. Yeah, that was that used to be I'm my sure world. I'm sure we'll have and a side I, conversation. I, I, well, I lived in New York I'm, for 20 going, years. Then this is going to excite you. I got two, and Dana will be excited about this, and she's going to kill me because I didn't talk to her about this, but I don't care. It's, we're on my show right now, so I can do this. <laughs> um, I... I I just I do a lot of I'm a film critic along with a filmmaker along with a film judge and so I just decided I'm not very good and I suspect that you might be in this cavalier I don't know I don't like rules a whole lot which is why everything that's on my business name is mine and I got kind of right. tired of the politics of it and I am big on integrity so this year um, 2017 I'll be launching my very first independent film festival. So I'm going to be a big cool. boss now. I'm going to have a whole film festival. And I'm going to allow, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're probably going to have little tables set up. And you don't necessarily have to be film relative, but we're going to have people on staff there. It's going to be in New York City, and I'm so excited. So we should probably stay in touch. Because one of the things I want to tell the audience about, I'm guessing that your partnership with with the Vets of America Talk to me about the – I saw the Hero Queen writers or what you call them, which are barbers. And I was so curious when I was looking on Facebook. I'm like, talk to me about what – they're barbers, right? That's what they're called. Forgive my ignorance. I think it's – No, me, no. Like, what, we need to talk about that. <laughs> or am funny. I mistaken? So, um, yeah, no. It's, it's um, So we've got a race. I, 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 I race motorcycles. And um, That's what so I thought. we've got a race team. Um, okay. And uh, the race team is, you know, it's – you got logos on our bikes. And um, when I was it's first cool. starting out, I was like, well, where would be a great place to test our products? And, you know, I'm sitting at the racetrack, 90% of the guys running around the paddock on a race weekend are single. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're wearing gear that they take home. They're going to have to clean. They've got this, you know, the smell of guy and exhaust and there's grease and there's bugs and, it's a perfect testing ground for a, uh, a cleaning products line. And so I started integrating right. the brand into our race team. And, you know, we have banners and the mechanics have the logos on their shirts and all of that. Um, the whole barber side of this, barber is actually a racetrack. Um, it's a very, oh. very famous racetrack in Alabama. Oh it's called gosh. Barber Motorsports okay. Park. And they, I think you probably picked up on one of our posts that uh, there was yeah. a race there about three weeks ago or a month ago or something like that. Um, so that's the tie there. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was really, you know, we, we figured if all of our products worked well in the confines of that environment, boy, they'll be great in your house for sure. Oh, no kidding. Definitely, without a doubt. Well, and I also ride motorcycles as well. I don't have my license at present. I've been a backseater for a long time. And I have a motorcycle, uh, a 
based show. Well, I think you know that. It's a motorcycle relative show. So, yeah, anything having to do with motorcycles is very intriguing, hugely intriguing to me. So I just thought that that was really neat as well. Um, so, yeah, so we'll have to have a side conversation and chit-chat about that because I'm sure we'll sure. do business together at some point in time. I'm, I'm huge on <laughs> co-networking. I don't think people realize that enough. I mean, yeah, I have a great show and I have a huge listening audience and that's wonderful. But it's nice that I, I do film and then I put my musician friends in it or I have my actor friends that are in it. And I'm very unbiased when it comes to things. I just like to co-support. I think that's extremely important. Well, do you know the, you uh, you know the back, CMJ not... Music Festival up in New York? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the guy who started that's a really good friend of mine. And, uh, oh, neat. You, yeah, you need to meet him next time you're in New York. Let oh, me know. With, without a doubt. I'm a huge supporter of those. You know, and that's the other thing, too, is people don't realize, you know, you have one radio show and you think, oh, okay, well, you know, sure, I interview people for a living. But what they don't right. realize is that this platform allows me to give platforms of all different kinds to all different people. You know, and, and that's what I like so much about it. It's, it's really, mm-hmm. it, it's huge, and I love it, and I like supporting people. And your product is very, very different, and I'm not going to lie about that. You know, it's one of those things that's really neat, you know. And, of course, I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm going to apologize to your girlfriend already because before you came on the show, I was like, okay, this is what I like. You have a guy like yourself. And, ladies, I'm going to tell you right now in my listening audience, you're not hard to look at. So now you have a (laughs) good-looking guy with a partner who's got a good product, and it's out there. And it's like, you know what? People don't think about that with marketing, but I hate to to say – I'm the first person to say this. I hate the fact that we live in a society where things like that capture attention. You know, you got a good-looking person who's intelligent selling a product. Well, why lie about it? You know what I'm talking about? Because it's like that doesn't (laughs) hold any bones to me. You know, I mean, I'm doing a calendar right now, and, yes, they say I'm so attractive, but I'm like, you know what? If you buy my calendar, don't buy it because I look nice in a dress. Buy it because I'm supporting 18 other independent actors and book artists and um, filmmakers and all that good stuff. You know, that's what it should be about. But I think we both know that that's the case. And so I guess that's my question. Well, I just want to make sure that you understand that I do not look good in a dress. So. Okay, well, that's good because it just wrecked my nice visual of the fact that here he is doing housework, right, ladies? Because he's talking about this, like, yeah, I'm doing the housework and I'm going to have a shirt on. And I'm like, okay, fine. (laughs) No, I I do want you to address that because a lot of the people that listen to my – my demographic is millennials as well. So one of the things I want you to address is because you own a business. Have we really gotten to the point where product is, you know, 25%, but how you look is this and how you market? And you know what I mean? It's like it's not dissimilar to the Harley thing. You know, you go to a Harley rally and you've got babes running around half naked. Why? Yeah. Because men buy motorcycles and attract. So talk to me a little right. bit about that marketing. How important is it to you that your team and yourself are, you know, attractive individuals? Do you do the demo, the typical demoing in terms of marketing? Does that matter to you? Do you think that's going to affect yeah. your product, that sort of good stuff? You know, it's interesting you know about saying. you know the whole marketing side of this is that you know you look, you bring up a, a brand like Harley. Harley is they're selling right. a lifestyle. You know, there's an know. image and a lifestyle that goes along with or owning a Harley. And I think a lot of people ride right. those bikes for that reason. I mean, I'm a I'm unfortunate. I I I'm in the race bike world, so I ride a Harley, and I'm like, oh, how do they ride these things? But they're not <laughs> riding them to go fast around a track (laughs) they're riding them because they want you know hair in the wind and all of that and that's what they're selling you look at a brand like monster energy monster energy has been very vocal about the fact that they absolutely don't care what's actually in the bottle if you go to their website they don't even i mean their product is actually buried it's really actually hard to find it they're again selling a lifestyle they're selling you know Monster Energy Supercross and all these extreme sports and all that. And they want people to feel that lifestyle when they drink their product. We are trying to both sell a really effective product, but also a lifestyle. And we're just kind of, we're getting into this, but you're very much keying in on something that, you know, our race team, you know, people look at that and they're like, wow, these guys are kind of cool guys. They race motorcycles and, uh, and all of that. Whether, you know, people are good looking or not, that's great. You know, if if someone's good looking, I think that's fantastic. I'm more of a substance type person. Um, You know, we want good people, quality, good hearts, hard driving, um, you know, super motivated. 
Um, but, you know, it's all part of the face of the company. Anybody wearing our brand, we want them to look the right, right way. We want them to act the right sure. way because, you know, that could help the brand, that can hurt the brand. So we're very focused on that whole lifestyle view and kind of the superficial of are the colors right and are the people right and um, is the messaging right and all of that. But we also spend a tremendous amount of time on the actual product. And so, you know, like our product formulations – why do they make them for guys? Well, the guys' formulation, like say our laundry detergent, we actually have a patented malodor technology that specifically targets male sweat odor. And so, you know, there's that type of, pro- you know, we have technologies like that in our product that nobody else has. And so we want to sell the lifestyle, but also be able to back it up with really kick-ass product that works well, sure. that works differently than anything else in the marketplace that guys will want to use to wash their clothes and women will want to use to wash their guys' clothes because it works better than everybody <laughs> else's. So, And I like that. I definitely do. I like that. And now you've just ruined my day because here I am running around saying, I really don't care how I look because my product sells itself. And now apparently right. I guess I have to care a little. Thanks a lot, Mike. Appreciate that. That's yeah, right. My name is still on You the brought thing, it so. up. I you know what? It is what it is. Well, and you know what the thing is, too? Most oftentimes I know that people are like, you can't go on a red carpet like that. I'm like, yes, I can actually, because I dress myself. I'm not, you know, I, I don't subscribe to the whole diva mentality. And my thought is if you really yep. want to know what I stand for, read what I write or listen to my show or come to a movie that I've made. That's, to, you know, that speaks for me. But yes, I agree with you in terms of that. Actually, you, I don't want to you see, but I, what you're bringing up is such an interesting point though, because I, you know, I was in the corporate mm-hmm. world for, you know, 25 years and about a I year know. and a half ago, two years ago, I jumped out of it to do that, to do this and when I did that you change as a person because this is my baby this is you know I'm running it the way I want to run it I want to present myself the way I want to present myself you know I'm speaking at the U.S. cleaning products um, meetings on Wednesday and everybody there is going to be in a suit and it's a very conservative group of people I'm wearing jeans and I'm wearing, you know, it's like (laughs) my hair is longer than it used to be. I haven't, I haven't used a razor on my face in years, but you know what? That's me. And I think people nowadays, especially the millennial generation, they just want to be themselves. This whole conformity thing is, I think it's going out the door and I, I love it because I think individuality and people expressing themselves Absolutely fantastic. I say do what you want. Who cares what people – you're supposed to do. See, did you hear that, publicist? So the next time I tell you off, it's because Mike said, in, you know, yeah, exactly. what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, so when Dana's yelling at me, thanks. I'm just going to say talk to Mike Eaton because he told me that, you know, non Dana doesn't yell. No, I never. totally get it. She does. No, no way. No, are you kidding? I'm going to tell you right now. I, I handle – I think we're up to 15 publicists that I deal with now, and I have to say that her and Bridget – my New York publicists, and I'm not just saying it because I live in New York, they're probably hands down some of the best that I've ever met, I've ever worked yeah, with. Yeah, they're They've great. They've been in my book. You know, they're, they are truly amazing people who care about their clients and their purpose. And one of the reasons why you got on this show is not just because Dana's name was on there. I usually try to investigate individuals, and I like people that go against the grain. I definitely like people that have that starter mentality, which is I have two dimes to rub together and no track record, but I'm going to do this anyway. That's huge, and I don't think people do enough of it nowadays. We live in two corporate yep. still of America, in my opinion. And I don't want to forget to touch on this because there is a personal side to my geet, and believe it or not. So we're going to talk about that right now. Um, you blew the whole are you single, married, et cetera question so we don't have to go there because I like to embarrass people on the show and say, hey, you're really good looking, and I've got 50,000 people out of 58,000 listeners that I have want to go out with you, but you just blew that all to hell. So he's taken, ladies. <laughs> so that's number one. We don't have to go there. I think it's really cool, though. He just informed me that his family very recently just moved to Milwaukee. That is so awesome. So when you say family, do you mean brothers, sisters? Who exactly is Yeah, my brother and sister-in-law and niece and nephew are now Milwaukee. They're in Cincinnati forever, and they just recently moved up there. And it's, really? uh, I've been up there okay. a couple times. It's a really cool city. Okay. I, did, I had no idea. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. I'd well, like to think so. It's, you know, Midwestern, I, I think, and it's funny, too, because when you go to New York City, the first, oh, my God, the first how many times I was like, I hate it here. They're going to run me over with a taxi cab. They're mean. They don't look at me. They don't talk to me. And it, you're, it's an acquired thing. I mean, you do have to, you, you, you finally have to understand the mentality, and I get it now, and I'm, and I'm totally fine. But us Midwesterners are just nice by nature. I live in Glendale, so I'm right on the river, 
actually. So my house yeah. is literally right in the river. I have a nice little football field front yard. What made the move here? Just did they have other family here or something? Or job. I'm just being. Yeah, curious. my brother had ah, a great job opportunity, and uh, so they left oh, Cincinnati. Cool. You know, he. It's interesting. My brother and I are you know, polar opposites. You know, if you were like really? if you were sitting across the table from my brother and I, one, we don't look any alike, we don't act anything alike. He's super conservative, you know, likes uh you know, the family and the picket fence and all of that. And he had lived in Cincinnati two miles away from the house in which we grew up. And uh this okay. is kind of his first big move and it's great. You know, it's it's been super for his family. The, the Milwaukee's been sure. really embracing of them. It's it's uh it's been a fantastic thing for them. Oh, see, that's so nice. Somebody I mean, because my show and talks about my hometown. I like it. Well, I hate it here now, so I can't wait to leave. Just kidding. I only half hate it. Well, no, I really am. Let, me, let me preface this. It's really a great place certain times of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just going to – but you know what? Here we are. There. It's November getting 7th cooler. right now, and I'm guessing it's – well, it is getting cooler right now. We're tipping at about 60 degrees, and I was in shorts yesterday. That's and it's bad. amazing. You know, people – it really is much nicer right now than you would expect it to be, so I'm very blessed. And I'm not going to say the S word because then it's going to start coming. But if you're from the Midwest, you already know that, yeah, that those white flakes come along. So it's weird. We're having a <laughs> holiday party, Christmas party, uh, or Christmas parade in two weeks, and it's like, why? I'm like, seriously, because if it keeps up like this, it might be this nice for Christmas. I'm yeah, we were in a music. grocery store yesterday, and they were playing Christmas music. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know, right? Early November. What are <laughs> you doing? We just got done with Halloween, right? Exactly. There you go. Thank you. Now, I want to inform everybody so that you know, yes, actually, he is a smarty, and you might know what he's doing because he attended Southwest, or excuse me, Southern Methodist University, got a BA in advertising and marketing, and he has a background at, um, this is interesting, Procter & Gamble. And your father actually stems from Procter & Gamble. Isn't that right? Yeah, my dad worked at Procter & Gamble for... 37 years. Yeah, he was a, like the only company he ever worked for. So the the, the, the joke around That's the family amazing. is that I'm trying to ruin his retirement <laughs> with this new product line. But he doesn't, he doesn't seem worried for some reason. I can't figure that I out. I know, no kidding, right? Okay, yeah. now this tidbit, now this is interesting. Now I, I have learned that you had overseen the marketing for um, American Idol. We've all heard of American Idol. So right. um, I, I know that people are going to get all excited because it's like, oh, my God, American Idol. I don't get as excited, but well, when you have a lot of friends that are musicians and they're like pants, you know, they're in a room. Yeah, and they're like, that show's ruining like the industry. Bucks. Yeah. Well, and I talk about this all the time. So I guess I want to talk about a positive because I know people think when they listen to my shows that I'm always dogging. And it's not that I am. I guess I, I, feel, I have a heart for all of my longtime musician friends or even the right. famous ones that started off. You know what I mean? They had to really earn that. So let's talk about the positive American Idol. Um, how did you get there? Uh, I'm curious to find out how you ended up working and collaborating with them. And in terms of the experience uh, on your side of the fence, what did you take away mm-hmm. from that experience that helped you with the new business that you have now? So um, my role in the show was um, dealing with all of the non-broadcast rights and businesses. Um Okay. And that includes all the consumer products lines, um, the sponsorship deals when piece of people would license the usage use of the American Idol marks for, you know, on pack programming or use on a karaoke machine or all that. I did all the business deals for the show um, okay. that were that brought revenue outside of the actual broadcast rights, and so. There were a number of facets of kind of what that job entailed. So like I did the, you know, the Coke cups in front of the judges, that deal with Coke. And we set the voting system up for the show because that was a revenue generating part of the show in most countries. Um, and we did the consumer products lines. And so there are a number of different facets of it. Nice. But, you know, before we even got into that, I was working, I was working at the time at a television production company called Fremantle Media and doing the exact okay. same type of work on other television properties, whether it's, you know, Price is Right or Baywatch or, you know, all these types of shows. And we were uh, informed um, of, you know, this show coming over from the U.K. And, um, you know, we knew nothing about it. And uh, our, you know, our, our television production teams were out walking the show around to all the different networks and, Nobody had any interest in it, and we didn't think much about it, and we're kind of like, well, it's just a U.K. format, no big deal. I guess nobody wants it. And then Rupert Murdoch's daughter evidently 
got involved and said, this show is so huge over the UK, dad, you've got to get involved in this. And evidently that's wow. kind of, that was kind of the impetus for it being picked up by Fox. Um, and so all of a sudden, you know, we're in meetings and like, all right, we're creating the show called American Idol in the United States. How are we going to get this figured out? <laughs> and so we, you know, hmm. the, you know, the, we were sitting in conference rooms, just coming up with ways to set the voting system up and how to do, you know, do we put co-cups in front of the team? You know, there were so many different facets of it outside of the actual, uh, running of the show. Um, but it was a really unbelievable thing to be involved in from the very beginning because we really built that thing from nothing into kind of what it is. Um, but, you know, certainly a learning experience in the sense that, you know, my job was looking at the property and going, trying to figure out how to make money off of it. And right. that has been probably the most critical point part of um, how it's benefited me now in that, when we were trying to figure out, all right, if we wanted to, we needed a, you know, we need a karaoke machine. Who's going to make a karaoke machine? I had to go out hmm. and find a manufacturer of a karaoke machine and try to figure out how to get that product made and get our logo on it. It's almost the exact same process that I've been going through to get my products made. And um, so just kind of training myself to look at the world a little bit differently and try to figure out, all right, there's an opportunity here. How do you make money off of it? And then how do you go out and get whatever product, product, et cetera, made um, to satisfy that need? Those are the two things that were really, really interesting that have helped me tremendously uh, since, since I left that, that the left the show. And um, the other thing that taught me that it was a big learning experience on that show is just, how to deal with people that are kind of titans of industry because, you know, at that point, you know, I, I didn't have experience working with the CEO of Fox and the CEO of Coca-Cola and the CEO of AT&T right. and all these executives. Oh, sure. And, you know, I was a snot nosed little kid uh, running around doing all these deals, but it really kind of gives you that personal confidence to say, you know what, I can do this. And actually what comes out of my mouth sometimes actually makes sense and some of the decisions you're making. And so just as a business person, it really gave me a lot of confidence to say, you know what, I can operate at the highest echelons of industries um, and be right. competent, um, which, which has helped a lot because now when I walk into meetings, you know, I know people, most people know a lot more than I do, but right you can hang with them and you can get stuff done and you know how to manipulate the situation to get what you need out of it. And so it's, uh, sure. it was a really great experience, um, at a very kind of, uh, in a very public way. Um, just because, um, it was such a, it was such a huge show as far as its influence mm -hmm. on the, on the music industry, boy, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. certainly a double edged sword. Um, oh, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's given people opportunity that never would have had opportunity. I mean, you look at someone like a Carrie Underwood um, or a oh, Kelly right, Clarkson, never well, in I a agree. million years would those people have seen the light of day. And so that's sure. been great. The thing that's disappointing about it is it kind of trivializes the whole process, you know, and Amen. It, it, it kind of, go. it's a shortcut. And, you know, those people probably didn't put in their, pay right. their dues like a lot of the uh, emerging artists do. And I can, I can understand how that would not sit well if I was an artist that, you know, slaved away at club after right. club after club after club. Um, but, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter really, you know, it's like if you got the short route there, if you got the long route there, as long as you get there, I think, uh, I think it's, it's all good. No, I see what you're saying. No, I, no, I do. And I always, you know, that's another one of the reasons why I use all the indies in my projects. Cause I'm like, God knows not everybody else is going to step up to use them. So no, thank you for that. I just figured that's important to have some of that back set. And by the way, I also noticed that you happen to, according to your resume, you speak French, but I'm just wondering if that's a high school thing that came and went or you actually are fluent. <laughs> Because I saw that little so, comment, like, oh, I speak French, um, so do I. I used to be fluent, pretty fluent, in that really? uh, we used to live in Belgium. We used to live in Belgium when I was uh, a little kid. Some, you know, my father working That's for Procter cool. & Gamble, part of the whole Procter & Gamble curriculum right. is you go over and work in Europe for a while. And so their, ba their, their European headquarters were based in Brussels. Um, and so we right. spent three years in Brussels when I was, I don't know, six, seven, or eight years old in that time frame. And so we lived in the okay. French speaking part of Brussels and that's where I picked up my French and um it's it's a very difficult language to continue to speak in this country. And uh so oh God, uh, yeah. unless I'm 
traveling to a French speaking country, it's, it's very rare that I ever speak it, but I can still sort of understand it. Um, and anytime I've ever gone back to France or wherever, um, it, it starts coming back right about the time I leave, <laughs> but, uh, no, I totally it's in there somewhere for sure. Yeah. We all use it like a little bit here and a little bit there for those of us that have had it before. So I thought, okay, that's really cool. It is. It's neat. (laughs) Now, I want to give um, the audience, uh, this is the part where you're quiet, and then I just talk about how kick-ass you are because I'm going to read off some accolades that are awesome. Um, He founded the company in May of 2011, which means now we're at 2016, almost 2017. So he's coming up on his sixth year of business on this. As he cited, of course, he does have a a partner with him. And nowadays, most of us need a partner to sustain things, of course. Four different things that I want to point out, and I'll have a question on that in a moment. He's got four different types of things here that I've notated. Uh, An odor spray, a dish soap, a detergent, and a spray cleaner. Um, Testament to some of the things that have been good for him. He has appeared on uh, Good Day Sacramento, KMAX TV, Wall Street Journal. He's been in men's fitness and good housekeeping, which is a clear testament right there, flat out, plain and simple. People are liking what he does. Um, I noticed on the website, and this is to those of you that haven't had a chance to get on there as of yet, um, he does have a blog that's listed on there, obviously, which is awesome. You can sign up for his newsletter so you can keep abreast of all the things for Hero Clean. He also has done giveaways in the past from iPhones to Apple Watch, which I think is always really cool to get your audience active and involved with what you've got going on. And he's also obviously, as he mentioned, in Target stores and to site two, of course, New York and California as well. So a couple questions relative to this. Um, for the four different types of products, you as a business owner and then you as a guy, both sides of the fence, tell me what your best product is and why. Uh, odor eliminating spray. And uh, okay. reason being, um, it's our best selling product. Um, okay. When you look at the product line, the laundry detergent, dish soap, dish and hand soap, all purpose cleaner, and the odor eliminating spray, those four products exist as a kit also in the way that. It's the least number of products a guy would need to clean everything. And so we set this okay. up. We wanted to simplify the cleaning products, the, the, pre, the cleaning products um, or the cleaning process for guys in that, you know, we don't subscribe to the fact that you need 17 different spray cleaners to clean all the surfaces. One right. bottle will do it all. Uh, the dish and hand soap, you can wash your hands with it. You can do your dishes with it. You can make soapy water, mop your floor, clean your car, all of that. And so we wanted to make all of our products very flexible. We wanted to make them very high nice. quality. Um, but we wanted to make this whole process simple. The laundry detergent, the dish soap, and the all-purpose cleaner are the cleaning mechanisms. And then this is where the real guy thing comes in from a cleaning regimen standpoint. The odor eliminating <laughs> spray is our delay mechanism. So if a guy's cleaning regimen is clean, then delay, 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 and then finally right. clean again. While they're delaying, our odor eliminating spray is a great way to make yourself appear cleaner than you actually are. <laughs> And the reason being is that it's – so our odor-eliminating spray has a, has a, uh, it's a probiotic microbe in it. And when you spray it on, it's got great fragrance. It's got that patented malodor technology I spoke about that specifically targets the male sweat odor. But it also has this okay. probiotic microbe that actually starves any bacteria from growing. So when you combine those three attributes, it will get rid of the bacteria because it will starve it. It will keep it away. It, it suppresses the odor that's there and gets rid of it, and then um, mm-hmm. it smells really good. So if you have stinky hockey gear, the, you know, your car smells, you spray the floorboards of your car, your sheets, you just want to freshen them up without having to wash them, your towels, anything, it's a great, great delay mechanism. Um, and also just a great general odor eliminator. Um, and so that's kind of our, one of our, our, kind of our secret weapon for being a guy. Um, you know, I've got okay. bottles of this all over the place. It's in my car. It's in my bag. It's, it's everywhere. But it's it's by far my favorite product, and seems to be the favorite product of the people out there as well. It's you know, like a Target. It's our number one selling product as well because there's nothing in Target. You know, right next. You know, this sits right next to Febreze that doesn't smell like flowers. So if mom has a son with you know, if little Johnny's hockey equipment smells, he's not going to be very happy if she sprays it with Febreze to get rid of the smell. Um, but if she sprays it with Hero, he's going to feel a little bit better about it, and she's <laughs> she's not going to smell his <laughs> hockey equipment anymore. <laughs> that is so cool, and I absolutely love that mentality. That is absolutely awesome. Now, um, 
I'm going to, and this is just a generalized question so people get a sense of this. Um, in terms of pricing, et cetera, is this competitive? Are yep. your products competitive? A little more expensive on the higher side? Yeah, so we're, you know, we're a, we're about 50 cents to a dollar more than what we call the market leaders. So our, uh, our hundred ounce bottle of laundry detergent is a dollar more than Tide. Um, okay. You know, our Febreze products, I think our, our odor eliminating spray is kind of, I think it's about 50 to 60 cents more than uh, the Febreze uh, or the uh, Unstoppables type product. So we're, we're right in alignment. Um, we're oh, a nice. little bit more. Uh, we just like to give the retailers a little bit of a higher margin um, on our right. product than the big boys do. Um, but um, we're, not, we're not outrageous. You know, we're not on the super, super premium pricing, kind of like the right. seventh generations and those guys. Of course. We're not that high. <laughs> and important to yeah. note that, of course. And before I forget, I don't want to forget to ask this question. Obviously, I know today that you're in the Target stores. So are we going to be seeing an, expan- an expansion of product and then placement in the near future if we haven't already? I yeah, just want to so on that. The, as of two weeks ago, the plan was for us to go national with Target. Okay. Um, and um, those plans are supposed to be for kind of a spring rollout, um, but we're supposed to, you know, we we don't have the order in hand yet. We're kind of <laughs> staring at our inboxes. It's supposed to be coming this week, uh, sure. the confirmation that's going to happen. So we're super excited about that. Uh, we're also going to be in Wegmans um, okay. up and down the East Coast, um, which is an nice. unbelievable grocery store chain. Um, and, you know, while this is going on, we have, you know, we're meeting with a number of the hardware stores, farm and ranch stores, regional grocery store chains, a couple of the national grocery store chains. So, I would say over the course of the next year, year and a half, um, you're going to start seeing our product uh, um, a lot more. Uh, so it's 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 starting to gear up. We we, we refer to it as the fire hose has opened up on us. <laughs> so we're super excited about it. That is neat. It. That is absolutely awesome. Okay, cool. Now I want to list off a bunch of different things. I want you to listen to this, and this is the ways and means by which individuals can find you on social media and otherwise. Um, yep. So here we go. A website www.hero and that's hyphen clean.com. He is on Facebook and of course Hero Clean being the name. Same name on Instagram and of course Twitter at Hero Clean. We also don't want to forget to mention Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Their website www.iava.org. They can also be seen on YouTube. They have a Facebook and an Instagram, which is both IAVA, and of course on Twitter at IAV. Anything I have missed in terms of how to find you. That's a good way. That will cover it. <laughs> you can email me directly through our website. Right, I see all those right. emails. So, Okay. Or if there's a request, can individuals put a request in if they live in a certain area and they want to see your products at a certain place? Or if you want to, do, do you pick and choose your own events to participate in? Or can they suggest an event or a festival or something? All the above, yeah. We're, we're open okay. to a lot of suggestion for sure. And, uh, you know, you okay, can well, – you can also purchase our product on Amazon, on Jet.com, directly from us um, for those air- people who don't have product in stores near them. Right. And before I forget, I didn't want to ask about that. I did not want to forget to ask about this. So I hear that you guys got this, what, I think it's called the Most Manly Award. Is that correct? I laughed. Serious? I don't know. Did, you, did we get a, man, did you a not Most win Manly this? Award? Yes. It's no cha- Is it not your company? <laughs> I don't think so. Because <laughs> I'm like – Either I found something that you know nothing about, or I'm just a bad journalist this week, and I found something I, that doesn't exist. Does I, this boy, ring you may about? have found something we don't know anything about. What, Amen to that if one. You, if you, Why don't if you go we've Google been awarded yourself? something, yeah. The only the most, the most recent not. awards that we we were just awarded Progressive Gro- Pro- Grocers, you know, Editor's Choice in the, the home cleaning oh, product, which was that was big for us. But, no, uh, but most serious, manly, so that, there's, that's. There's data out there if, that indicates it is the most manly award. I think you should look into yourself. Because seriously, yeah, if I found it, you know there's a reason why I found it. If someone named us most manly, they themselves. should let us know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Mikey, and I'll go back and I'll take a look and see where I found it. It might take me a while, but I will find it. But no, you have been notated as that. And normally I bring up these things for a reason because obviously it's great promo and people want to know that. I mean, that's a testament. For sure. I just laugh because oh, I'm like, seriously, most this. manly? This is so funny. <laughs> 
So now before I forget, I don't want to forget a couple quick things because if you haven't listened to my show before, there's only really two things that we need to do. Three, first of all, I always do this at the very end, which is Dana Humphrey, without you, I wouldn't have this guy along with 57,000 other wonderful New York City clients that I love. And why do I love them so much? Because they are a reflection of you. Thank you, my dear friend, for bringing another wonderful guest to my show. I can't thank you enough. I miss you very much. And if I come to New York City, you better be there this time because she's never there. (laughs) Every time I come there, she's in Chicago. We've only had two dates together, really. Really, three with Bridget, if to be honest. So yes, and I know Dana, this is going to upset you when I tell your client this, but oh well, because this might produce more work. Because Mike Eaton, one of the things I want to suggest is, uh, I think it should be part of my film festival. But more importantly, I think we should try to find an event where you and I can be in the same place, and we could do this all over again as a live interview, and I could talk the talk, and then you'd have this kind of relatively cool person say hey i like the hero clean stuff and all that good jazz it'd be cool i love collaborating and doing like live events and that kind of stuff because it's fun i mean it's just fun and it's you know it's a means to be able to incorporate people and get the product and the and the name out there so that's awesome let's so, do it um you know don't forget about me definitely without a doubt and the last thing that i do on my show is i get to tell you what i think of you I always get Uh-oh. to tell my guests what I think of them. This is the wrapping up part, which is awesome. So before I forget, um, I don't want to forget to mention this because I tell everybody that comes on my show this that I like, and I usually don't dislike anyone on my show. But always, you have an open-door policy to come back anytime you want to because – it's a fun and interesting platform. At least I hope that you've had some fun and some entertainment. So definitely, first of all, the door is open to you at any given point in time. I so appreciate these are just that. my thoughts and impressions. Definitely take advantage well, of course. that. Um, And I want to throw this out there to the listening audience. The reason why I give the impressions of the guest is, uh, first of all, they're not scripted. I don't ever write anything down when it comes to my thoughts. So this is right off the cuff, right off the top of my head, and none of it is ever bullshit. And that's what I pride myself on is it's very important for listeners to hear this because they've never heard of you and they've never met you before. And frankly, neither have I. Let's hope that's the case because, you know, he's big on this whole representation of marketing. So we'll see if the pretty face stands up to the product that he has, which I'm sure it probably (laughs) does. So these are my thoughts. First of all, as I mentioned before, I wanted to have you on my show because you have invented an idea and you have pulled your money out of your own pocket. You've put yourself, your time, your love, and your passion into an investment with absolutely no guarantee that any of it would work. Further, you turn around and you take a nonprofit and you put your hand out and you say, hey, I want to hold hands with you and I want to do something fabulous. And now look at you five years later. You have. You're intelligent, you're intriguing, you're innovative when it comes to your thoughts and your ideas. I like the fact that you've taken a base product and you've turned it around and you've made it your own, something that's not only a lot more masculine, but it makes life a lot easier for the guys in the household, which makes life easier for the women. So therefore, you have really happy couples. So in essence, you're almost like a sex therapist slash counselor. So kudos (laughs) to you on that one. Um, What I find most impressive about you isn't the way you look or the fact that you've bottled up different products. It's the fact that you believe in what you do. You're very lighthearted about it. It, but you're also very serious when you need to be. And why do I say that, folks? Because I've seen a number of different presentations and interviews and articles and things that he's done. He takes his job seriously, but he takes his task and his meeting even more seriously. That I find fundamentally important. I look forward to having a little time with you. I'm sorry that, unfortunately, we had to postpone our interview, but I hope I've made up for it. And certainly, if there's anything I can do to help you, know that I will. I appreciate that. I'm That's blushing. Look at you. Oh, I do that it's not a easy lot, to make actually. Me blush. Sometimes people cry sometimes. Like, I'll do my ending, and then they, like, cry, and then I feel bad, and I'm like, I'm such a jerk. But you know <laughs> what? It, it is, it, you know, it's important. Sometimes people, people just need that. a good cry every once in a while. Well, they do, and more importantly, I think it's important. If you have an outside person who's never met you that's vouching for you, imagine what happens when you have them in a room together. And, and I've been very blessed. I've met a lot of the people that have come on the show, and they've been amazing, and they've done very well with me or without me. Uh, I just hope that it works for you. I mean, I'm hearing wonderful things, and it sounds terrific, and I, and I do. Definitely keep me posted. And certainly, if I'm in New York later in the – I know I won't get to – if I do come, it won't be till Thursday. I have some things I have to wrap up today and tomorrow, and mm-hmm. it's a child I have to take care of. So you have to get the hell off my show now so I can go take care of my kids. Yeah, well, let me know because I'm seeing Dana Thursday night, so. (laughs) Oh, and she didn't even tell me that? I'm not talking to her now. That's Yeah, I wouldn't either. Dana Humphrey, Dana, Dana, Dana. I'm tell- well, yeah, she's going to hear about when I talk this interview. I can tell you that right now. But, no, definitely, please. Um, you have my phone number. Send me some details and information. Let me know how to get a hold of you so that if I'm there, you I can got it. I will. I, um, be awesome. you know, we've got a lot of product, and we're going to be expanding the product line a lot in 17. We're doing pods and wipes awesome. and all that. And so I'll keep you updated on all the new stuff that's out please. there. 
Definitely, without a doubt, certainly. And I, one of the things I do, in case you didn't mention this to you, is I do product review all the time. I do film review. I do book review. Oh, really? Review, et all right, we got to get I some do, product then. I can, yeah, I can do. Well, it's a guy product though, so that's kind of why I'm like, yeah, I'll well, I'll suggest that. It's, I, you know, here's what I'm a differentiator for you. It's a guy. It's built okay. for men, but women also love it. So here's the deal with this though. When, if 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 you are looking for a product, especially like a laundry detergent, to get rid of that guy stink out of their moisture wicking material, right. out of their clothes, this is this is why we made this. It's not it's built for men, but there's no reason why women shouldn't buy it to to wash their husbands or boyfriends or sons' uh, right. clothes in because it is specifically formulated to get rid of that kind of guy odor that is seem is very different than what uh, um, like guy sweat and women sweat very different very different I gotcha well or I have to so, or I have to have a consistent love life which would be another thing if there was a guy here all the time then that's, that's a whole other little show. boys only qualify yeah that's exactly that tell me we've had shows about that one and I did forget <laughs> I, had, I forgot that question I have to ask this this has become a staple question on my show you don't know me well, but you. what I will tell you is I ask every show guest this because I'm a little delusional. And I'm not really delusional, but I keep hoping that you're going to be the guest that's going to give me what I want. So here it goes. Right. Um, there are five people besides, of course, Mike Eaton from Hero Clean that I've dreamed of interviewing. And on my top five list, there's this one particular actor. And I just know that you're going to say to me, Cindy, I have his phone number right in my book, and I'm going to call right. him, and he's going to come on your show. <laughs> you're going to do it right now for me. So I know you're going to say the word. I'm best friends with Michael Madsen. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you an interview next week with him. That is not I know you're going to do it right someone now. that I know. Like, you're not going to say no. Oh, no, come on. sorry to let you Why down. Does <laughs> what do I got to do? I mean, you know, I've been trying this for a, almost a year and a half now. And, it, and it's frustrating just because – and it's become the running joke. That's why I ask everybody because I'm like, I know darn well that you probably don't even know this guy. But I interview lots of people that have worked with him or have met him, et cetera. So it's just getting frustrating because I'm like, you know what? I, I just want to I just want to interview the guy. What does a girl got to do? You know what I'm saying? I got to give up my kids apparently or something. I don't know. Yeah, he seems like well, he, he would be a cool guy. Well, thanks for that satisfying thing. Oh, my yeah. God, yes. I mean, I've researched him to the 95th degree. And what's frustrating is in this business, and I'm sure you're learning this, you know, publicists are wonderful, but in particular, his publicist is not um, – you'll hear from him like once every two months. And he won't say no, but he won't say yes either. So then he'll ask a bunch right. of questions, and he'll leave it at that. And I'm like, you know what? Guess what? I'm having my own film festival next year, and guess who I'm inviting? There you right. go. Right, exactly. How do you get out? He'll be right in front Headliner. of me. I'm like, you know what? What's the best representation? Bam. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I know I'm a little crazy, but that's okay. Well, thanks for disappointing me. Appreciate that, that you don't have a number. Yeah, I'm sorry about me. that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's Sometimes great. Sometimes you Another have to no. learn to live with disappointment, though. Trust me. <laughs> that's almost an every other day thing for me, but that's okay. I built my own stuff, and I don't have to be as disappointed. But thank you, Noah. No, thank you. And definitely do stay in touch. Let me know what's going on about the New York thing, and we'll chit-chat about yep, a bunch we'll of do. different stuff. But thank Perfect. you so much, and have a wonderful yeah, day. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. It was great day. talking to you. Anytime. You too, dear. All right, talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Was he just not funny and amazing? And I knew it was going to be, not just because he's a Dana client. And again, thanks so much, Dana. Um, So again, folks, one more time, www.hero-clean.com. He is on Facebook, uh, Hero Clean, Instagram, same name, and Twitter, at Hero Clean. One more time, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America is where the proceeds are going. He has Facebook and Instagram. It's I-A-V-A. On Twitter, it's at IAVA. They are on YouTube and their main website, www.iava.org. Don't want to forget to remind everybody tomorrow, next show, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time, Kelly Caravitas, please join us. One of my favorite people, one of the most exciting things we're going to talk about besides how wonderful he is, is his stint on Boardwalk Empire, which we all know is one of my favorite, favorite shows. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks so much to my kids for being cooperative for an hour. I'm going to go take care of my family. You enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop! At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS, wireless, figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. 
What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.